remote work, uh, it's a huge change compared to some, how some of us have uh, worked in the past, right? And looking at some numbers before uh, COVID-19, around 7% of employees regularly worked from home. Now uh, that number looks like about, you know, two thirds of Americans. And, you know, this number is only gonna, is only gonna increase from here on out. Um, so what, you know, what's, like Scott mentioned with the shift, um, it's important to support your teams by providing them with the right tools and offering assistance to properly set up home offices. But what's actually slowing down this uh, transition to remote, uh, to remote work? So your IT team may be spending more time context switching between apps to scroll, uh, scroll through and update tickets, provision accounts, work with engineering teams. All of these uh, manual steps kind of eat away at time and makes it harder to scale. Um, and then uh, multiple tickets for the same, for similar requests. So. Uh, some issues you'll see that follow that common theme of, hey, I need to reset my password, or hey, how do I set up uh, two-factor authentication? So your IT team uh, may be working on the same few issues every day, which takes time away to resolve more pressing or more involved issues, like a software bug or a system outage. And, uh, you know, kind of on the employee side of things, nothing is more frustrating than not knowing when you'll be able to get back to work after running into a roadblock, submitting a request. Um, you know, a lot of um, remote teams are, they require, um, you know, equipment to get set up, they need more access. You know, in the past, we've seen that uh, with Zoom, um, people didn't need full enterprise licenses. They weren't as much uh, virtual meetings or virtual communication. Now that we're working remotely, everyone kind of needs to be interacting with their teams, interacting with customers. So access to those kinds of apps are more important. What about setting up VPN or um, access to uh, different types of, you know, dual monitor, new mouse, new keyboard. So all this, um, these tools and this uh, equipment is really important to kind of set up the home office, get uh, teams ready for remote work. So, um, you know, in order to kind of speed up that transition to remote work and get teams more productive, how can you eliminate manual processes, reduce re redundancy for simple requests like password resets and 2FA? And how can you increase your response speed so that you can get your employees um, up and running quickly? So uh, one way to reduce redundancy. So we have a, one of our customers actually uses this internally. Um, this is a uh, financial services company with over 9,000 employees. Um, so they were seeing these common requests, right? How do I reset my password? How do I set up 2FA? So with KnowledgeBot, which is powered by uh, WorkBot, a Workado chatbot for Slack, where um, you know, they're able to get employees answers uh, quickly and in real time and kind of take IT out of the picture in these simple requests. So how does this work? Um, an employee can actually ask KnowledgeBot any question in Slack. So KnowledgeBot uses NLP to kind of understand the intent of the question and the context and instantly queries these um, knowledge-based kind of repositories or libraries to find an answer. And it'll share a preview of um, these relevant results in Slack. So if this answers the employee's question, great. You know, the employee has the information needed to continue on with their day, no roadblocks. Um, if not, they can easily file a ticket in ServiceNow within Slack without having to switch between apps. Um, so, you know, this, uh, this company, what they were seeing, they were seeing about 120,000 um, help desk requests every year. And with KnowledgeBot, they've actually seen a reduction in about 10 to 11% of these requests. So, um, you know, this frees up IT resources to kind of spend less time walking employees through how to reset passwords and spend more time on um, involved work. And another use case that the same uh, company was kind of looking at is how they can provide um, additional self-service with approvals and with uh, provisioning. So. Um, the way that this works, uh, this is, and again, um, you know, we use, we're, we're going to be talking about Slack quite a bit in a lot of these workflows, but um, that's just kind of a trend that we're seeing where, um, you know, both IT and employees are finding it um, more, I guess, you know, beneficial to have uh, the help desk interactions through Slack powered by ServiceNow or Zendesk in the back end. Um, so with this workflow, um, you know, with WorkBot, again, this is a Workado chatbot for Slack. Um, an employee can request access to an app or an item, and then um, WorkBot will create a ticket in ServiceNow. And so that initial request, along with all of the request info from ServiceNow, will be sent to the IT team in Slack for an approval. So if this is approved, then um, you know app or item is provisioned. If not, then WorkBot logs that reason in ServiceNow and then notifies the requester. So now this company is able to process over 60,000 provisioning requests every year with no manual effort. And they've reduced the time that it takes to provision employees by about 20% and saved over uh, 30,000 hours of manual ITSM uh, labor per year. So here um, we're looking at that similar workflow uh, powered by Assistant Bot. Um, we're, we're kind of optimizing this provisioning process so that we know exactly what the employee needs when they need it. And we can streamline these approvals that are needed by um, allowing managers or IT to quickly approve or reject the request within Slack itself. And if everything looks good, the employee can get access as soon as possible rather than kind of playing 
um, you know, rather than IT playing catch up and scrolling through all of these requests to find it uh, to work on it a day or two later. And then at any point in time, the employee is actually able to check the status of the request in Slack, and um, they're notified as soon as there's any update made to the request. So with that, um, shall we take a look at a demo? Scott, do you mind uh, walking us through this? Sure, let's do it. Um, and as you bring that up, I just want to reiterate that something Raina said earlier that uh, in this demo, we're starting the process off in Slack, uh, which is a trend we're seeing in IT. But this process could be kicked off in any collaboration tool that you use or really any other event or um, or even in your email. So, so in this example, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> so, in, so in this example, uh, this is something that really happened when everyone started to work remote, right? You, I needed uh, some new equipment that I didn't have at my home office. So we're going to start off by going to Slack and going to the assistant bot and using one of these, uh, using the equipment provisioning of action. And what this does is this automatically creates a request in service now to set up the ticket. And then using, right in Slack, I'm able to request the equipment that I need. So in this case, I think I would need a new mouse. Uh, so I can click that and that gets added automatically to my request. And then I can keep on adding items like um, a Dell monitor, for example. And so without having to reach out to IT or some other process, I can just start the provisioning process myself. And then I can request the approval through a single quick click. And we've set up logic in the back end to send the approval to the right person. In this case, Jon Snow actually needs to request my, my equipment. Uh, and this gives me some quick details around what the ticket is. And we've e even embedded a link that takes you to the request in ServiceNow. So you can just go directly to the ticket if you want to look at more additional details. And you can see that this ticket has just been created and it includes the items that I requested. So it's a great way for people to self-service their provisioning. And we've also included the ability to approve. Now it looks like that Raina can approve her own request. Uh, so Raina, why don't you try clicking it? And you'll see that you get a message that, no, nope, only the approved person, can, in this case, Jon Snow, can approve it. And so this is another way you can provide um, a layer of, of security to make sure that Rain is not just approving her own request, but the actual person or admin can do it. Uh, so uh, this is just one way you can make the process easy, uh, but also include some logic and checks in, in there. So uh, just one way uh, IT can automate a lot of these uh, everyday processes. Right. Yeah, this can. And so, I mean, go ahead. Sorry, Scott. Yeah, saying, um, you know, just yeah, by automating this process, right, employees can kind of uh, put in a request as soon as they need to, and it can get approved in real time, so that you know teams have what they need to be successful um, uh, much more quickly. 